Welcome back everyone, Toys is here, and I am back yet again for yet another McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse video. Today, I'm pretty stoked. When this was revealed, I looked at the photos and I thought, okay, that's really what I wanted to see the first time around with the first release of Bane. And of course, yes, this is a new two-pack featuring Batman versus Bane. I like the title of that. That takes me back. Whenever you had two packs back in the day, it was always more of a versus kind of styling. And on the sides of the box, yes, this is indeed from Batman Nightfall, which the artwork on the back is gorgeous. That's amazing. Here's the barcode. Mine came from Target as of July 21st, happy July 21st, everyone. You can pick these up at Target, and they'll be shipping out from everywhere else soon enough. So this is gonna be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse 2-pack from the old 90s Nightfall storyline, Batman versus Bane. And so now here's everything taken out of the packaging. You get a few accessories, you get two figures. If you want to keep the backdrop of the packaging, it is the Batcave, which is a nice touch, a nice little attention to detail, right? If you know the Nightfall storyline, this trading card, like I said, has gorgeous artwork, fantastic. Now, this, this is always a favorite of mine. When companies make this, a thing, a reality, of which this goes through many different people to proofread, just screen grab that and see if you have an aneurysm while you're reading it. I absolutely love that. Hasbro Skywalkers, and now we have this two-pack, of which Batman comes with item-holding hands. That's a nice touch. I tell that with Marvel Legends Spider-Mans all the time. You need items, and item holding hands and a battering is the perfect item for Batman. And you get outstretched hands, grippy hands. That's what I want to see. And they're their own thing. They're not reused from a different figure. They don't have weird texturing on the back. It's gloves for this Batman, of which this Batman, there are some things about it where I'm like, ah, but in all honesty, for the most part, I like it. I like what they did with the tatters and the tears in the bat suits. I totally dig that they looked at the artwork for said tatters and tears, of which it changes from panel to panel, but I like the shading that it has going on. They got the color of the gray right. The blues really stand out amidst all the tears, especially the one on his neck. The tears are only on the front, just FYI. That's really the only part you're gonna see because of the cape, but the head portrait is where I kind of get hung up. And I think what happens is it looks too much like a zombie sort of styling. I totally get what they're going for. It's a bloodied Batman Bruce Wayne mouth of which, hey, they put blood on a figure. That's cool. They have a little cell shading around the eyes. There's some shading, too much teeth, too much blood in the sense that it doesn't come across as he's been beat up. It kind of resembles, at least for me, more of a zombie. If you get rid of the mouth and all that's going on there, that's a great Batman head portrait. They just need to kind of take a break with some of the paint and some of the teeth. I like the cell shading on the belt as well. It's very subtle, but it's there. They looked at the comic. They looked at the source material. I'm applauding you, McFarlane Toys, for this. This is what I've been wanting to see. The cape... I'm a little indifferent about, yes, it's very shiny. Yes, it has a huge bendy wire in it. It's a thick bendy wire, let me tell you. You can get it in every position, billowing, whatever you want. The one caveat to that is that it's kind of hard to drape it down. Like, he'll stand really nicely with said cape billowing out. That's not a problem at all, especially when you want to start posing him out. That's a nice touch. I like the two-sided. It's blue and black underneath. Very well done. But like I said, getting it draped down over his shoulders, you kind of have to fight the cape in so many ways. So in all honesty, with recent McFarlane Toys track records and how it's always five steps forward, 10 steps back, I would say this is indeed a full five-step forward sort of sitch, and you're not backtracking. They really have done a nice job. They just need to kind of fine tune it at this 
points. With the Bane, the Bane comes with extra hands. Go figure. And they've painted the hands. The last Bane didn't have the flesh and it didn't have the white and it didn't have all the necessary parts that make up a glove <laughs> in so many ways. So they've done it. And yes, you get a very cool actual Nightfall Bane, complete with the mask and the red eyes. And I would say that in McFarlane's style, in reusing the last Bane with some new parts and pieces, which definitely add to it. Yes, I think they have succeeded. I like the blue shading on this. That tends to go either way with me. I like what I'm seeing here. I get what they're trying to do. They even have the wire. It's the silver wire. They even got all the little prongs, how it attaches to his head. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Attention to detail. And he has so much back and arm hair. That, that's a 90s back and arm hair sort of situation going on. <laughs> now, yes, like I said, it's going to reuse the last body, but he has fisted hands now, and those are all painted beautifully. When it comes to the wire with his Venom machine, one thing I would have liked to have seen maybe is to paint the button red. Now, it does fluctuate between artists and who draws them and yada yada, but a red button would have been cool, just saying. The waist, the belt... That's the Nightfall Bane. Again, it's very much in that over-exaggerated style that McFarlane likes to do, but if I had no idea about the DC Multiverse action figures and you said, where does this Bane come from? I would totally say, yeah, that's a true Nightfall Bane. He even has peg holes on the bottom. So to go from all the blue shading up to the mask with his big red eyes, I love that. That's pretty cool. Minimal articulation, and I like the over-exaggerated body parts. He has a tiny head amidst this giant muscular body, and that to me is definitely Bane. And the wire works with you. It never becomes cumbersome. It just flows out the back of his head to load him up with venom. And posing him out was actually a lot of fun because I think with the inner swappable hands, that really does make certain characters come to life and you need fisted hands for a character like Bane. You even get a lot of rotation in the abdomen, the legs, the knees. Now I would say at the price point of 70 bucks, it's time to start getting rid of the big chunky pins. We've gotten to this point, let's see it a lot more streamlined because when you pose him up with the Nightfall Batman, yes, in terms of the comic, he's not supposed to be huge like he is in action figure form here, but it's kind of fun at the same time because you want a giant hulking Bane just throwing fists, pummeling Batman. And that's what you're really getting here from when you want to really punch the Dark Knight, really deck him. And you can really have fun doing that now. When you want to look at the differences between the original release and now this new Bane. Yes, they're very obvious changes. I did like the first release of that Bane, but it's the only Bane we'd had in a long time. It's very much a cobbleization of different looks for Bane. You could even say the Arkham video game universe. Is he cool? Heck yeah, is he still cool? Yeah, I would say so. But for me, and what I'd like to be collecting now for McFarlane toys, I'm gonna be very picky and choosy, but a Nightfall Bane would be the more ideal Bane, of course. In terms of the Batman, now, you've had a black and gray costume, you've had this Nightfall costume, you got the blue and gray costume, which came out before this STCC Batman. To see now the gray of this suit, the blues, that's a great Nightfall, really battered, beaten up Batman. I like the rips, the tears, and I like that they didn't sculpt the bat symbol on the chest. I know a lot of people like sculpted stuff. I prefer it. To pair this Bane up with various villains from Batman's rogues gallery. Yes, of course, Bane will tower over them, but to really run the gauntlet on Batman, really get him tired enough to finally break him, he looks good with all of them. And likewise, to see this Bane paired up with Robin and Nightwing, and then later on in the whole Nightfall storyline with Jean-Paul Valley. yes, all of these look great. All of these look fun. Sure, there could be minor changes here and there, especially with the Robin, kind of sort of the Nightwing. Perhaps we will see changes later. But for now, I am having fun. But I think the main question everyone's going to have is, 
can you pose these two figures out and really break the bats? And I will say that, yes, because you have the open hands, because you have the fisted hands, because you have, we'll say, lighter articulation than most would like, right? I totally agree with you on that sense. But yes, you can get him into said pose to really put your knee up and then smack the Batman down and break his back. However, with the limited articulation, you're really not going to be able to get the knee up that high. Really get him into that pose unless you want to hold him. But for the most part on your shelf, this does look pretty darn cool. So that will wrap it up for my quick look at the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse 2-pack featuring Batman versus Bane from the 90s Nightfall storyline. And through and through, I've looked at tons of McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse figures. This, I feel, is the first time in a long time where I can honestly tell you they got it right. They looked at the source material. They tattered, bruised, beat up Batman with a cloth cape, inner swappable hands, everything fits. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the head portrait with the teeth and the blood. That aside, you have a great Bane. You updated the parts and pieces. You gave us cell shading. You made it look like the Nightfall storyline. And for that alone, that's what I want to see from you, McFarlane Toys. I want to see the comic book source material, the animated source material, the movie source material brought to life in action figure form. And I don't want to see your take anymore. I want to see all the artists all the years of storytelling brought to life in your action figures. That's where I'm a collector of DC Multiverse. So you've heard my thoughts and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, I went a little crazy at Target today. So expect some more McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse vids coming up. Also some superpowers. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.